Adobe InDesign can create some basic or even complex interactive Adobe PDFs. Before we actually get into the video series where we learn how to create a basic form, let's see how a form works. So this is a basic um, fifth grade field trip form where a, sign, a parent can sign permission for their kid to go to different field trips. So let's zoom in and see how this works. So right here we have two fields that are pretty much the same. They're just basically called text fields where we're gonna type some text. So I'm gonna add my name to the parent or legal guardian name. You can see as I click in there and type, it was very easy to type that. Um, and each one of these, you can see they both had a red border around it. That means that those were required because obviously you can't turn in a permission slip without telling the person what the parent's name is and the child's name. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a fake child's name, so John Doe. And then down here, we have something called check boxes. And you wanted to use check boxes when people can click to acknowledge that yes, they want something or no, they want something and also when you want to allow them to check more than one option. So in this instance, I wanna give my child permission to go to all the field trips so I can click them all or I can choose just a few or I can choose none. So let's just add a few here. And then down here, we're also using a checkbox, but this time, oops, don't know what that blink was, but this time it's just one checkbox to acknowledge that I have the right to give or revoke permission at any time um, later in the school year. So I'm going to click that to acknowledge that I know that. Now as we hover over these things you can see that, well maybe can, okay, well shoot, there you go. So as I hover over them you can see the little yellow tool tip that comes up. It's basically, this is what we call the description in the field and this is basically a way for somebody to get a little bit more information if they have a question about what section they're on. So anything I hover over, like right here, if I hover over, it says, please type your child's first and last name. So they might have had a question on whether or not they should just put the first name or the full name. So that helps with that. Okay, so then down here we have radio buttons, and these are usually shown as circles. And the big difference between radio buttons and check boxes is that check boxes you can check all, none, or some, and this one is where you're gonna choose either or. So you can only choose yes or no. So if you're willing to chaperone, you choose yes. If you're unwilling, you choose no. There's no other in-between or other options. Doesn't mean you couldn't have four or five options, but consider like a field where you fill out and it says, how old are you? Are you between 20 and 29, or 30 and 39, or 40 and 49? You can only choose one of those options because you're only one age. So that's when you would choose a radio button, when they can only choose one option. So then we can also use this field form, which is called a, let me think about this. It's a list. There's two different types. There's a list box and a combo box. This is a combo box where again, you can choose only one option, but you know when you're filling out a form and you have to put the state and there are 50 options in there, you're only gonna choose the state you live in or whatever, but you don't wanna list all 50 states in your form. So that's when you wanna use this kind of condensed box option here. The list box option is when you are able to choose more than one. So let's say I wanted to say like these three are my first choices, then I would use a list box, but I don't, that's complicated. I just want parents to tell me the one that they are most willing to chaperone. So then we have this option to add a signature. Now somebody can also print and sign this, so that's why I made this box really big, but they can also click here and sign it digitally. So here's how this works. I will show you first that I already have a digital ID that I created, and it's gonna expire on, on May 15th, 2024. This file is on my computer. I leave it on my computer so I can si sign any PDF form. So it's gonna find that because it's, it knows that I have this because it's the same computer I use to sign all the forms. So if I wanna use this one, then I go ahead and hit continue, and it's gonna create this appearance. You can change the appearance if there were options to change it here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my password in. So this makes it a unique signature because nobody else has my password and they can't sign it unless they know that password. So that's what makes these signatures legal in courts. So we're gonna go ahead and hit sign and it's gonna pop in here with the option to save this. So I'm gonna put signed and desktop and do save. 
So now this is going to give me a signature line in here that nobody else can uh, recreate or they couldn't have put in there because they don't have my, um, my password. Okay. So then there are two different buttons. You can either print the form or email the form. So let's pretend I just need to print the form. I'm going to click that button and it's going to bring up my printer and then I can print it. If I want to email the form, I can click on it and it'll say, do you want to use the default email application, which for me is Microsoft Outlook. If somebody doesn't have like an installed email on their computer, then this won't really work. What they'll need to do is save this PDF and then just email it as an attachment. But for here, I do have Outlook, so I'll click continue. It's going to bring up my email. It's going to pop automatically the, the email it needs to go to. It's going to automatically add the subject, attach it, and then it's also going to give a note um, to the email people, whoever I'm sending this to, that they need to open it to review the data. So that is the basics of the form. And what we need to do now is we need to go over what happens if somebody doesn't have a signature. So I'm going to close this and I am going to open the form before I had filled it out and I'm going to click on signature and I'll show you what happens if you don't have a signature yet um, or you need to configure a new one. So we'll configure a new digital ID and then we can use a signature creation device like those little plug-in boxes where somebody can sign on the screen. Um, you can use a digital ID from a file. So let's pretend um, I have a new computer. I just need to go find that same digital ID file that it previously found. And then I just put in my password and it should work. But let's say this is the first time I'm doing this or I just want to create a new one. I can create a new digital ID, click continue. And then it's going to say, do you want to save it to a file on your computer or save it for me on a Mac to Apple Keychain? But we'll just say save to, to a file on the computer. So I'll click OK, and I'm going to add in all my information. So this is um, Morgan Community College. That's my employer. And this is the marketing department. And this is if I want to sign it on behalf of the college. But if I'm just signing as a parent or whatever, then I wouldn't put that information. And then I need to put my email address so anybody can contact me. And then I'm going to go ahead and leave these the same way and then hit continue. And this is where it's going to say, where do you want to save it? So I'm just going to save it to the desktop so you can see what this looks like. And then I'm going to apply a password. So it's going to tell you it's green when you've had enough characters, capital letters, lowercase letters, symbols, numbers, etc. So that it's trying to acknowledge whether or not your password is strong. So we'll go ahead and hit save and then now see now I have two of them so that's going to confuse me next time I'm in here but now I can use that one and I can hit continue and I just need to put that same password in and then click sign and it will add that signature so I'm going to put this as number two and then save it and there you go. So what does it look like? Let's see if I can show you what that looks like. It looks like this icon, if you can see it, as a little certificate icon. And I just need to save that somewhere on my computer and then Adobe Acrobat should always find that. And if for some reason it loses it, you just need to go drive to wherever that place is, like your documents folder, your flash drive, whatever, and click on that signature and you should be good to go.